welcome and happy Valentine's Day to all, especially to the cancer survivors who are connected in some way to Team Veronica Cancer Resource Center. I'm deeply honored and happy to be celebrating today with many, and we have here assembled at this time, and we're expecting many more people uh, to come. We're ha very happy to have the state, uh, Massachusetts State Senator, Mr. Mike Brady. Thank you, and I'm, I'm just honored to be here. <coughs> We've, um, we, we know that there's been many people that have suffered through cancer, and some have survived and some have not. Uh, as we all know, we've got to do more research and put more funding into cancer research, and hopefully we will have a cure someday. Um, and I am hopeful because I know there's a lot of different medicines that have helped treat cancer, <clears throat> but uh, it's been very difficult for families who have suffered with any diseases. I mean, we're, we're still not totally out of the Omicron. I took my mask off to talk on the mic today, but um, the coronavirus is still suffering many people out there. Um, it's real, whether people want to believe it or not. And I trust the scientists and the doctors. And, and through vaccinations, and I encourage people to get vaccinated, you know, people who have been critical about the vaccination, um, you know, they, they were critical about the polio vaccine back in the 1950s. And if Elvis Presley didn't come out and take the vaccine himself to make me, more people feel comfortable, people wouldn't have trusted that. And I trust the doctors. Not everyone is perfect other than God himself. We're all human, but I trust the research that has been done. So I encourage everybody because the more people get vaccinated, and you may still get the coronavirus. I, I had got diagnosed before the vaccine. Luckily, I had minimal symptoms. Um, I had a little cough and a cold, nothing major. Some people suffer from fevers and everything else. And I got it after the vaccine, but my symptoms were minimal. But the people that are in the hospital, majority, again, everybody's got their own health issues, but a majority of people that have not got vaccinated and they are suffering, and young children as well, not just elderly people. So please uh, do everything you can. We are here to, um, you know, for, for cancer and to honor those who have survived, the, the cancer survivors, and, and I'm grateful to be a part of this. Um, we have all had people in our lives touched by cancer. So please, whatever we can do to uh, help those with cancer and to bring awareness to that and any fundraising we need to do, any research we need to do, please, uh, we're, we're all part of this team in the city of Brockton. So thank you for having me here. I appreciate that. And I'm just honored to be uh, just a participant in this. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much, Senator. Yeah, thank you once again, uh, Senator. And um, I truly am I'm grateful to him. He uh, showed up and supported the cancer awareness walk we had on October 24th over at DW Field uh, Park. And this is all in honor of my belate, belate, belated or beloved uh, baby sister, Veronica Bruce Butler, and uh, who is dearly missed. And she's a uh, fashion display to hear in this poster. And she it truly was an, a gift, an angel. And she left what I call a living spirit of love, peace, and compassion for others. And so her life through her spirit and through her efforts and who, through her determination lives on. And I've accepted the mantle and I've accepted the, the flame and to continue that flame to inspire, encourage, and support other people. As I see it that the cancer survivors, they hold the key to hope through their testimonies, through their stories. And but for their stories, in the future, should someone get a diagnosis, if they don't have that previous knowledge and experience of that, the story from someone else, they may say, oh my gosh, that's a death wish. That's a death sentence, and, and that might, I'm doomed, I'm done. But if they can hear stories from people who have survived or know others who have survived five years, 10 years, even 20 years, there's a sense of hope. And as the senator said, we have to trust in and be respectful to science. He goes, yeah, some, like everybody's out, out there is not the greatest people. You know, some people, some people do it for money. Other people would do it for legacy, for their reputation. There are some scientists and doctors and professionals who, their life, their, their legacy, their history, their status, their professional, their reputation is on the line. So many are not chasing money, but they just want to maintain and really and do the right thing and support and for, to uphold that reputation. So I'm here, again, holding that light up to continue uh, Veronica's legacy, and I'm so very happy to be here. 
And joining us here is our mom, and I don't know if she wants to say a few words. Just come up and up say, hi. she's been a, such a, a tremendous support uh, along with, you know, with this effort. And my dear uh, lady friend, girlfriend, because they're not boys and girls, but that's an old term. And uh, Sylvia, she's been a uh, tremendous help and support of this effort. And then now uh, we, ha we have our survivor ladies who attended the uh, special and formal banquet we had on December 23rd, where we honored and showered uh, cancer survivors with love and appreciation. We celebrated your, your survival because, again, we believe and we know that your testimony is the key to hope and I want to remind you encourage you that your testimony you share that evening people some people are still talking about it that they feel so hopeful they feel courageous now and they're not afraid as much to even to get diagnosed or uh, to get checked out because they know now that that's not a death wish and so thank you so much. Would you like to have a few words? And on this special day, this is a special day. And I call it, I, in the promotion information, I call it Happy Valentine's Day of Love. And this is the day we want to we want to show. But before I uh, pass the mic off to you, I also want to uh, announce that in two days from now, which is uh, Feb uh, sorry February 16th, which happens to be Veronica's birthday. And so that is a special day. So we'll be uh, reconvening right here in this space from 12 to 2 to have our official opening of our office here and the ribbon, ribbon cutting ceremony. We'll, we, we'll be once again joined by the dear senator and the mayor of Brockton and some of the city councilors here who are with their arms open and their hands stretched wide and you know, to let, let the residents know that they're aware and they're also sensitive and they're also compassionate about what's going on here, particularly around the health and disparities here in Brockton. So I'm gonna give you the mic. Introduce yourself if you like. Hello, my name is Marilyn Simmons and I'm a 21 year survivor. Wow. And, thank you. and I feel it's a privilege for me to be able to tell my story to others because it might help somebody else's journey to be a little easier if they know somewhat what to expect and to see me and I'm here Still smiling, Still smiling. And, and, and telling my story and, and letting people know, you know, it, it's a, a scary diagnosis when you hear it, but it doesn't necessarily mean a death sentence. And I feel that people need to be as positive as they can, stick to their routine as close as they can, to as normal as they can. I know some people can't, but those that can, stick to a normal routine as you can and just keep stepping and say, one day this will be behind me. Wow. Yeah, thank you so much. I appreciate that. And we're going to have a few words, if you like. <laughs> Hi, my name is Joyce Nandy, and I'm a 10-year survivor. Um, and April will be 11 years. And I was a stage four, but I'm here to say it's not. It's not over until God says it's over. Mm -hmm. And as long as you believe in God, you got, you got somebody got your back. It's not your family. It's not your friends or whatever. God has your back. Mm -hmm. And keep praying. But some people, you know, like my friend Marilyn said, like some people don't, don't see it that way. They see it like, oh, this is over. This is over. Let me tell you, when I was going through my stuff, I wanted to give up. But I'm still here. And I don't mind going around telling people, it's not over. Mm -hmm. it's, it's really not over. Wow. And you want to give up, don't. Mm -hmm. Because once you get on your knees and start praying, you don't even have to get on your knees. Get in your prayer corner, mm -hmm. God is listening. Wow. Mm -hmm. And I didn't, you know, I went to my family and stuff, and I told them, because they looked at me like, oh, you, you know, you, you look bad. I'm like, how do sick people supposed to look, <laughs> you know? <laughs> You know, I feel good because mm -hmm. I went through my journey mm -hmm. and I went through the hard times, the rough times, the bad times, but I'm still here. Mm -hmm. And I don't mind telling my, my, you know, telling my story. Mm -hmm. And I would tell it to anybody that want to want to hear it because they like now they have new, you know, new stuff that's, you know, helpful for, can for cancer because at that time 
like now they have the cap that you can't, can't lose your hair. I didn't have that. They have all this new stuff because when we was going through it, they didn't have all that stuff. So we had to deal with whatever we deal with. But look, I'm still here. <laughs> and I thank God every day. And my journey is a journey that I would never forget, you know. But I don't mind telling other people about my journey. Wow. We are so grateful for that uh, testimony. So uplifting. So we have 22 years and 21 years, and we have uh, 10, almost 11 years. Yes, that, wow. 11 years. April will be 11 years. Wow. And in fact, you you uttered some of the words that my dear sister used to say all the time. You said, "Veronica, how are you?" And she says, "Well, I love God. God's gonna have the last word, and God's got me." That was her. God's got me. You went to her last day. She said, God's got me. And that, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. No, 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 that's good. I want no, I, I always, like, when I start praying, I say, when God give you a second chance, mm -hmm. make sure you use it for good. Mm -hmm. And that's what I've been doing. I've been doing cookouts. I've been doing, you know, like people ask me to speak or whatever. And that's how I look at it. God gave me a second chance, and I'm going to use every drop of it as long as I live. Yeah, that's good. And then that that's so like paying forward is a concept. You you pay forward because again, it's through our words that we can encourage someone else. When you tell somebody, don't give up, you don't quit. Yeah, you, the human side will make you depressed and feel lonely and feel like you, you don't have a way to go. But there's a source, and um, as the senator referred, he says God, you know, God's gonna have the Lord. He's in control. You, we all agree to that. He's in control. And some people may not believe that, but there's a, 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 if you consider just faith, faith is the substance of things. People say, well, you don't have faith, but I'll see you tomorrow. By faith, they already see you tomorrow. Yeah. So everyone has faith. This is like the degree of how strong that faith is. Mm -hmm. we, have, have, we have blind faith. We say, I'll see you tomorrow. I guarantee you, I'll be definitely there at 2 o'clock. Mm -hmm. But by faith, you see yourself there tomorrow. And some people who like doubt in faith. Well, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to, you know, or maybe speak in negative terms. Well, this is going to absolutely kill me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you don't want to speak in that term. So now we're going to pass the mic on to someone else. We introduce yourself. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, my name is Agida Pereira. I'm from Kivert. Um, I came to the United States because I'm very sick in Kivert. I don't know what I can do in Kivert. So I came here because my health. And uh, six months when I'm here, so they, they diagnose I have a, um, I have a uric cancer. So that time I'm only 20 years old. That's devastating for me. And then to all my family. Like it's the best of worst. And then I get three. It's so hard to be here by yourself, and then you don't have nobody. Um, and then I survived, so after t 11 years, the cancer is coming back. Now I in remission. I take tamoxifen for 10 years. I still take tamoxifen. Life is gone seven years. So I'm still on that, but... That she said, God is a hope. Mm -hmm. So the only thing I pray every day is a one more day because I have uh, three kids. So now they live with me. They come from Kivritz. They live with me here. They now they my support. So I think uh, everybody support me the time because I by myself. So but I still here. So I'm fighting every day. And uh, also, uh, my sisters, I have two sisters, and my mom, they passed away the, like with the cancer by about a year, one and, uh, one and the other. So, but God is giving me the chance to stay uh, here. So I'm still here. I'm, I'm part of the um, American Council Survive. So i part of the... Um, the um, 
organization there's a um we call is a oh my god it's so emotional it's called um we go out to talk to people does not the uh, the concept it is not me you want to die because the time they they um told me i have a cancer i think like the only thing i said i want to die i want to die i want to die so but the doctors talked to me and then the, all the people that want me they say there's not many you want to die because if you get faith you not die i think all the churches they go to the hospital stay with me pray with me because i'm being depressed i go down so because i'm the time it does only think i think is about die so now i don't think about that so i have another sister she have a breast cancer too she's a live in portugal right now uh we support each other so with the cancer we want to survive i want to survive So all the time I wake up I say my kids all the time they cry they say mommy we are not get cancer too. I say no you guys not get cancer. Even we are in a family but I'm here to support you you guys whatever they came but I know the God is going to protect you. Not get cancer like me like your grandma like your aunties. But you never know but you have to be prepared. I'm just I talk to my kids to be prepared because I have two daughters one boy. So now I'm so glad uh, so to support everybody to have a cancer because I brought the organization it's a mensageira da esperança that mean we go out to get the message for everybody to get them a faith uh, um um a faith to to not lose their mind when do you get cancer because me the first time when doctor tell me i have a cancer they so devastated for me because i say yeah i'm too young to get cancer i'm just 28 mm-hmm. is like uh, is a life but what do you want to do you have to, to get faith all the time i pray all in the morning in the afternoon and the night all the time i say oh god you can give me one day after the day to live my life because i want to see my uh two growing child to to go to grow up to take them to school to take them to park so i'm so glad so to be a part of this today Yes. And and I tell people too, well, when I was going through it, when I have my talks with God, I said, God, I know you're in control. So I'm going to give it over to you. Just give me the strength to make it day by day. And that's how I I made it through is just I gave it over. And um I know you got my back and you you got me through this and whatever to be will be. And that's how I made it. So hang in there. No, you know what I said. <laughs> This is my story. I'm sorry, but um to you. You say you was here alone and I used to go B- BMC and a lot of people was alone. And I would take out my time to go sit with them because they going through chemo. They didn't have yeah. no family, nobody, whatever. Listen. I had friends. I had friends. She never know when I'm going to show up. I always ask her so when your appointment and she said oh my appointment is Thursday and then i ha- i have them to make my appointment the same day so when i go i make my appointment the same day and when i show up she's like oh you following me i said no i had an appointment today but i sit <laughs> with her through her whole whole treatment cuz with me i had somebody with me my daughter was with me through radiation cancer you know she wanted to be there 24/7 but i told her when i'm doing radiation she can't be with me cuz it's only like 15 20 minutes mm-hmm. but you're good because you got your kids now mm-hmm. so you're not alone and my thing is i wanted to quit but then i had my daughter and i said i can't quit on her and that's what kept me going so look at it as your kids you have your kids you want to see them get grown 
never put a doubt because your kids got your back. Even God has has the big part, but your kids gonna keep you going. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened to me. And I appreciate my daughter every day, but I I miss from going, you know, because the pandemic and whatever. But when I used to go see one of my friends, then I I hear somebody else on the other side. I say, oh, I know that person. So I'm back and forth because they don't have nobody. So that's that's how I spent my time. I said, God gave this to me, and I'm not giving it up. So look at it you, at your kids. You're gonna get depressed sometimes and all that, but your kids are gonna keep you going. You're not gonna be depressed too long. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you for the complimenting and, and adding to that. The, um, the scripture says, uh, I shall not die. You have to say to yourself, I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord because God's going to bring you through. And on that note, I'd like to honor you as a uh, cancer survivor angel. And then uh, with this, with Team Veronica Cancer Resource Center, we're gonna, uh, the springtime, we're going to we're going to launch a, a whole new movement, and the movement will involve trying to change the language from cancer, cancer victim, no more cancer victim. You're an angel, mm -hmm. and angels are sent by God, and angels are special. They have a gift. They have a message. Angels don't die, okay? And so you're a survivor angel, so you're here with a purpose and a mission and a reason. And so you may be, God may have sent you to be that angel to your children so they can have more faith that you talked about, to encourage other people who may in their own world feel alone and feel lonely. So you, you show. So if you don't mind standing up. So on behalf of uh, Veronica Butler Bruce and Team Veronica Cancer Resource Center, we want to welcome you as a cancer survivor angel. So you're always an angel. And then we also want to bless you with this bell. In, uh, typically in tradition, when, when the cancer is over, uh, we want you to feel, uh, to ring this bell whenever you feel this bell of rejoice. When you feel that moment that God is working on your behalf, we want you to ring this bell. Okay. All right? And that's for you. Thank okay, you. God bless you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're, you're, you're welcome. You're welcome. We have some more things for you before you go. Okay. okay. I'm going to Bedford, but I came, came here all the time. You guys have a something to do about cancer, I can come, so I live in New Bedford, but it's not far away to me to come, to drive, to come here to help and to do anything for cancer survivors. So I appreciate it when you have any event, mm -hmm. I can give you my number on my Facebook and then you can you. yeah, tell me and then I'm here. Okay. Thank you. Right. And just as a, okay, you have a seat. And uh, just as a, a few like a plug for Team Veronica Cancer Resource Center. We know that cancer affects people in, in special ways, and sometimes it's not just them, their body, but it affects other people. And sometimes those other people are affected even more than those who are affected in the body. Because if you say a, a loved one who's supporting you or together with you, and suddenly that party A uh, is diagnosed with cancer. So now party B has to re-engineer or change their life, change their job, change their plans. And so the, the changes may be so impactful. So what Team Veronica Cancer Resource Center plans to do, it's part of our bigger space, is we're going we're gonna to reach out and support not just the cancer survivors, we want to support cancer supporters so, and the people who support cancer survivors. This is part of our, our plan. And we know that when cancer uh, affects people, it's not just their body. It's all the other things that make up their life, livelihood. Their income, their housing situation, the matters of insurance, 
and even getting support. So this is what we want to do through Team Veronica Cancer Resource Center. We want to be that resource. And again, not just for people who are surviving cancer, but people who may encounter that in the future. People may who, be, who might be supporting you. Maybe the person who, um, like uh, Joyce, who may want to come visit you, but maybe her funds are kind of low, or maybe she just haven't, doesn't have the transportation. We want to be a resource. So Joyce said, listen, I want to go to New Bedford to visit our friend, but you know I'm having transportation problems. We want to be that resource to say, no problem, Joyce. We're going to pay for an Uber to get you there. So it's making that connection. So it's not just about you. It's about helping her to help you. And that helps your family, not just helping your children to live and be happy and, and stable. So we, we see this as a, almost like a, a pebble that goes into the ocean or a pond, and it expands, expands. This is all that spirit of love, peace, and compassion for others. And so we're so grateful. We have two more oncomers. Like, uh, we're just going around and introducing and sharing a, a little about our story. But before we do that, we want to extend to uh, our, the, the mic to our dear friend, Alan Jacobson. He's a wonderful, wonderful friend. And in fact, he and I are considered brothers from a different mother. <laughs> uh, Alan and I, we both met in the education field. Uh, I, may, I was teaching in the Boston Public Schools, and he was mentoring in the Boston Public Schools. And so we had the f great opportunity and fortune to meet each other there. And we, start, we began talking and finding that we had so much in common, uh, business-wise, just life-wise, spiritually. And we also had some differences that we were willing to learn about each other in terms of our belief systems and our uh, spiritual uh, foundations and stuff. But we met a middle ground. We can appreciate both each other. And so we reach out and support each other in a special way. Alan, too, is a, a cancer survivor. And he uh, so gracefully shared part of his story during our banquet we had on December 23rd. Um, and we're just so grateful that he, again, continues to uh, show up and support what's going on uh, with that. Because, it's, uh, again, um, as uh, the senator said, this is, we have to do this together. We work together. And we're one big community. And we have this philosophy, uh, Team Veronica Cancer Resource Center, we have a philosophy that says that uh, the, a person who is strong makes a stronger community. You know, if we can build you up, then that builds your family up, that builds your neighborhood up, that builds us a big, strong society. And that's with knowledge, with the faith that you talked about, there's encouraging and people can step out on their faith and, and do. Thank you, Alan. Here we go. <laughs> Thanks, James. Yeah, James, with you, it's easy to find common ground because of your, your big heart. Um, so um, uh, I'm really humbled to hear everybody's story so far and uh, honored to be in your presence because it, it shows that you're survivors and it shows that you thrive, you know, just by hearing the way you spoke about it. Um, you know, you heard the expression when life gives you uh, a lemon, make lemonade. Mm -hmm or you can have an omelet, you know. Uh, <clears throat> Louis Zamperini, who survived World War II and was an Olympic marathoner, um, Olympic runner, he wrote a book, and in his book he said, some people see life as a uh, glass is half empty, some people see life as a glass half full. Just give me an overflowing glass. Yeah. And, and that's what, what I'm hearing from everybody. So, you know, my... Uh, my issue with cancer, I was very fortunate with stage one, but it still scares you. You know, it's like it, it's a little C. No, it's a big C. And if you have the more, so to me, there's a formula the more faith that somebody has, the smaller the C is, you know, and, and how I, I would see it. So I have a lot of faith, and whatever happens, I know that I'd be okay to handle it. I had a great support system as well, and very blessed for, with that. Um, my second wife, I was madly in love with, deep in love with her for 16 years, and she was a real stalwart in the Boston Police Department. Uh, broke the glass ceiling six times, Flo Creed Jacobson, and she was diagnosed with stage four, so it was already that extensive. 
and I was with her for the radiation, the chemo, and I heard the bell ring, and uh, so I saw what real toughness and resilience was, and I learned from her that whatever happens, happens. You know, we start off with a with a exhalation when the doctor slaps us, and it turns into an inhalation when we cry, and then many decades later, hopefully a long time later, we take our last breath as an exhale. But every breath in between is a gift, you know. So, and that's that's the way I try to look at life. So, and not to be fearful, but to be more into a place of faith. Just um, and that way, your heart opens. And when your heart can open, you're letting in more love from other people. And it takes courage to do that. So, yeah, James, thank you for doing, having Team Veronica. You know, it's, um, that's really the ultimate lemonade, you know, from your sister passing. You know, I never met her in person, but I heard so much about her. I feel like I know her well. And your mother is uh, the star water of the whole family. It keeps everybody going. So, thank you, Mrs. Bruce. Well, I hear you, That's right. Thanks, James. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you so much, Alan. Appreciate that. And again, um, we, we, we applaud you. Yes. I just um, I want to thank you all for all your coverage coming today and speaking the truth from your heart. And we do have faith in God, and we have to continue our faith and believe in God. But also, God puts people in our lives that help us so Anybody who needs any help, whether it's family or friends, you always have somebody you can reach out to us. And, and as an elected official, don't think I know all the answers because I don't. I'm a human being. We are all human other than God himself was the only perfect spirit and faith in God. But if anything you think we should be doing in the state level, whether it be for funding of research or funding to help with cancer survivors or to whatever it is, please don't hesitate to contact us because we cannot do our job alone without your support. And I, I thank you for the coverage. I had a girlfriend who passed away to cancer several years ago. My parents both had cancer. They survived cancer. My father had a, a, a stroke later on, which he, he didn't survive. He was 79 years old. And my mother died young as she had circulation problems. But so many people in our lives have been touched with cancer. And, and, um, you know, please don't hesitate to contact us because I am so, uh, you have given me faith by your words today uh, in, in the courage that you have shown speaking the truth of y y what you've gone through in the survivorship and all that. So I am just a piece of the big puzzle of life. And, and again, please let me know what we can do. So, and James, thank you for hosting us today. Oh, um, and I plan on coming back again. And uh, God bless you all. Okay, um, now we have uh, a dear friend who I recently met. Um, Ms., um, just, I want to give, Senator, before you go, I have a gift for you. Oh, yeah. Excuse me. <laughs> yeah, I have a gift for you. Yeah, this, and uh, we have a rose. Oh, thank you very much. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. And the drink. Your okay. choice. Vitamin C. Gotta vitamin have C, that. we have. The grape juice is good. Grape juice, okay. Yes, Gotta get my vitamin C, right? right? And <laughs> here's a couple kisses from all of us. <laughs> thank you. We're right back. Yeah. At you as all right, well. thank you. So I see you on Wednesday. Thank you, God's well. Have a great okay, day. thank you. Okay, now it's my pleasure to, uh, to introduce, if you'll be so uh, kind to bless us with some words. We have a, a young lady and uh, who I met um, not long ago. And there's a little comment saying that the, the world is so small. It's a small world. And it turns out to be a real small world that we kind of indirectly know each other through a mutual person. And Michelle, Miss, Miss Michelle Jones, uh, she and her brother and I went to high school together. So we know each other. We started talking about being Bostonians and in the South End, and we mentioned names and said, what is this a small, small world? So I want to introduce you, if you will. Thank you. Can I share maybe some, some words? Good afternoon, everyone. It is a pleasure in being here. And happy Valentine's to you, ma'am. And I know this is a blessing for you and your family. And I thank you you for inviting me and I thank you for the connection with Marilyn yeah. and um, I'm twice a cancer survivor my name is Michelle um, I was diagnosed at the age of 40 years old when I first found out that I was diagnosed with cancer 
in 2006. And then in 2015, I believe, I'm not exactly sure the date, I was turned around, diagnosed with cancer again, breast cancer, and the same breast, right breast. Um, the second time around, I had radiation and chemo, and I had my treatment at Dana-Farber. And like God put people in your life to bless you. My, this is my mom, Miss Sherry Jones. Um, if it wasn't for my family and my mom with pr prayer, I said those are the three key ingredients for healing and prayer, faith, and hope. So I put my faith and trust in the Lord. Mm -hmm. And my mom and my father was my backbone and my children. And my dad passed away with cancer. And then God blessed me with these two young ladies here, Miss Marilyn and Joyce. They put them in my life to give me support. You know, we have a support system. So I don't want to be too long. No, this so, this so um, is and I'm going to tell you how God is good. My cancer was sitting in three areas in the second time around. My family and I, we planned a trip to go to. And my doctor said, no, you need to do your... Um, treatment right away, which was a total of 22, along with surgery, chemo, and radiation. And I didn't know that I had cancer, you know, the second time around. And I said, no, I'm going to go on my trip. I didn't know, you know, at that particular time, so I'm just going to go on with my trip. I'm going to trust God and do everything when I get back. So I thank God for each, each and one of you. Okay, M Michelle, if you if you would don't mind, would you please stand? And we like on behalf of Veronica Bruce Butler and the Team Veronica Cancer Resource Center, we want to honor you as a cancer survivor angel. Thank you. As I mentioned a, uh, a little earlier, that in the springtime we're going to launch a, a, a campaign, and the campaign is going we're going to change the language from cancer victim, no longer victim. You're an angel, and angels are sent by God, and angels have a gift, and angels have a word, a message, and um, something special for others. And your testimony, your living witness that God is real, the faith works, and everything, that becomes the message for the angel. The angels of the Bible uh, encourage them to have faith, and don't doubt, and to hold on, and to trust, and believe. All these things, faith, hope, and trust that you talked about. So you are the angel with that natural message that we want you to uh, uh, continue to speak the truths into the atmosphere, into people's lives, and that you are the survivor and you are the representation of what God would have to be. So the, you become the uh, survivor because others didn't make it. Like my beloved sister, she didn't make it with the breast cancer, but she was an angel, so she's an angel uh, sacrificed. So make a distinction with it's an angel sacrificed. And so she was that angel, the sacrifice that went through. And someone spoke up, you spoke years ago, they didn't have all this technology and stuff. So the technology they use on her, they will, it will grow to different forms. And so they won't have to do like they, someone spoke before years ago, they didn't have all this stuff like about hair replacements and stuff, so people had to do that, so it became a sacrifice. And so once again, you're the an uh, cancer angel survived, and we salute you and congratulate you for uh, right through there. And we also want to bless you with a bell. We know that typically the bells are wrong, performed when they're declared finished. But we want, want you to take this symbolic bell. And when you, when you feel that moment of rejoice, when you know that God is working in your behalf, we want to see, and this is your hallelujah bell. This is what we want to say praise on for when we ring the bell, and we want you to rejoice in those well, moments. Thank you, Tom. <laughs> 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 yeah, thank you. Thank you. And we're going to have some words from mom. Um, introduce yourself. Um, as she said, my name is Sherry Jones. And uh, I thank God that I haven't had cancer, mm -hmm. but I have been the caretaker uh, of people in my family that's had cancer. I took care of my mom, who God blessed to live to be 83 years old before she died uh, with cancer. She got cancer late in life. And 
God allowed me to be there with her to, because she didn't want to stay in the hospital and she didn't want to go through all of that. So it was seven of us, but six of us were still living. And we took turns taking care of her, washing her, bathing her, changing her. And God allowed me to be there for her to pass away in my arms mm -hmm. when she took that last breath. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, after, you know, when you think you just can't take it anymore and go on, then there was my husband who, uh, God blessed me to be with him for 50 years before he passed on. And he had the cancer, but he was there. God allowed him to be there with her. There were times that she would fall down and feel like she couldn't make it. And he would say, we're going to, we're going to beat this thing. We're going to do this together. And so, um, a lot of times she would say, why me? Why me? Why am I going through this? And so I explained to her, I said, See, you know, sometimes um, God allow you to go through things to serve as a purpose to help somebody else. Mm -hmm. And I don't think she believed that, believed that uh, when I first said that. But then later on, God showed her when she would be in the hospital and there would be these women there that would feel like giving up. And here she was going through the same thing. But God allowed her to minister to them right there in the hospital and help them to go forward. So I thank God that he has allowed me to witness all of this and be there for my, my daughter. Wow. Well, praise the Lord on that. Well, I feel like I'm in church, but the church is here. And so I'm so grateful for that because you just underscored, again, a point I made earlier, the whole purpose in the, the net or the catch-all for what uh, Team Veronica Cancer Resource Center is intended for. Not just those who are going through, but those who support them because they need your support. So we can support you to do what you need to do to support her and others in your family and friends, then, then it's a big collection, you know. And again, you're paying forward. So God gives you the strength that you need to empower and strengthen others. And that's really powerful. That's really powerful. So we honor you. We honor, we celebrate you. And it's a happy Valentine's Day to you, to all of you at this time. So, so, so we have one more special person here. And a so, uh, lady I met about two years ago. And she's, uh, she's not a stranger to cancer. She's a uh, survivor and also she's currently experiencing, you know, going through. And so we honor her. I appreciate her. I've been trying to reach her for a long time and, and finally connected. I was so grateful to, to connect with, um, we got, I call her, she calls her name Manu. So that perhaps she can tell you her real name. And we welcome you, Manu. Thank you. Happy Valentine's Day. Thank you, Mr. James, but I don't speak English very well. <laughs> Happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> okay, uh, somebody speak Creole here? Uh, translate for me, you, I don't know, no Creole. <laughs> somebody translate for me? Yeah, I can do it. Okay. Okay. Um, Minha nome, <risos> minha nome é Manuela, uh, essa chama Manu Guerreiro para morrer de câncer. Traduz. É floresta, é a honra da boa, é a declarar um câncer survivor. Thank so, you. Yeah, because I know that you are also a leader of a group. 
Mensageiro da Esperança. Mensageiro da Esperança. Ok, we have a group. I'm a part of that. Yes. So we create a Mensageiro da Esperança. And again, with um, with Team Veronica, it's not. We're just not in isolation. We will even support your group to further because it's not about us. It's about the people. Okay. I know most organizations don't feel like, but this is our turf. Is that no? We don't care, and we're not restricted to Brockton because cancer doesn't have a destination, a domain. It's the person. The person just so happened to live in Bridgewater. It's okay. The person living in Bedford or Boston doesn't matter. Some so organizations, oh, we only cater to the people. No, it doesn't matter. It's the cancer. Okay. Cancer travels, and that's what we want to extend. Not just Brockton, but beyond. And so not just this organization, but even to your organization. So we can support your organization to help the people you support. Then the, uh, the, the mm -hmm. blessing will continue. If it's a support, then not group. Yeah. Group, so we honor you as a cancer survivor angel. Let me pick up your arm right up here. Put this in here. Okay, good job. Okay. Good job. So here, cancer survivor angel. And then I'm also going to give you a, a bell. So in your special moments when you feel, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Lord. Or whatever you feel like you want to swing the bell and, and, and feel, you can feel like good moments. Yeah. Thanks to God. We, we, yeah, thank God. There you go. There you go. Make the bells ring. Okay, so now you can share. Thank you so much. Thank you, me, yeah. Dr. James. Take my foot? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, antiga marca na 2014. Oh, Meu nome é Maria Manuela e este chama Manu Guerreira para morrer esta luta contra o câncer. Her name is uh, Manuela, Ver Manuela. Maria Manuela. Maria Manuela, <laughs> but they call her Manu because it does a fight with a cancer. Manu Guerreira. Manu Guerreira. <laughs> <laughs> Um, chega a América na 2014. She came into the United States in 2014. Bem de Cabo Verde. She came from Cape Verde. Uh -huh. Bem de Ferre, para onde Cabo Verde ainda trabalha a minha polícia. She came from Cape Verde. Nem é país. She's a, a cop in her country. Um, para fazer um check-up, eles, eles detectam com um câncer maligno, invasivo, agressivo na they minha mama. They went to the hospital, they detectam com um câncer invasivo. And that's so aggressive. Doctor, declaring, ma dentro de três meses manda tinha câncer corpo inteiro, inclusive na osso e na minha cabeça. The doctor said in the three months she wanna get cancer all over her body. The cancer wanna spread. Mas a um doutor que não vai morrer tem que ter fé na Deus. But she said the doctor no because she have a lot of faith in God. Uh, a partir daquele momento, em luta, em continuo em tratamento, onde quem toma uh, seis sessões de quimioterapia. After that, she fight and then she come home and then she went to chemo and radiation too. Radiation 37 sessão. Uh, radiation 37 section. Dentro de três anos, uh, surge mais um câncer. On, in three years, it's coming back another cancer. Na costa. In the back. Continua a tua luta I com a mesma fé. Hoje, um sali, me câncer e Today, sobrevivente. I'm here, I'm a cancer maior, uh, maior e. Como um, que pode falar? Minha maior medo era ficar ali, morrer ali. Minha família ficava na Cabo Verde, inclusive my, tinha uma criança. My own The more my I fear, this is because I wanna be, I wanna stay here and die here, and then my family is back to the country. Cosa que tem que estar flanhos é para tudo alguém que detectar algum câncer para poder Deus em primeiro lugar, para falar Deus e com pai. Everything I wanna tell you guys is just every anybody they find they diagnosed with the cancer to be a faith in God. Because it's the only thing they can help you. Um promessa que me faz Deus também é que 
sim consegui para viver para uma doutora Flamengo podia durar três meses manda criava organização Onde que ainda convidava só gente de câncer? Hoje tem uma organização que chama Mensageira da Esperança. Ela está fazer parte. E não tem mais dois e mulher sobrevivente para morrer trabalhos que saí hoje e nesse momento obrigada para tudo melhoras para tudo alguém e um bom dia de amizade para nós todos e amor obrigado Dr James e Dr James escreve música para mim Yes, you write a musical for? Yeah. Ah, então, de um dela, And she wants to like to uh, sing a little bit with to get. Together. Yeah. yeah, Manu uh, learned. Manu is also a singer. She is a, um, a, radio, a radio show or talk show host. Yeah. She has a pretty good size following here in Brockton. And uh, she's a you know, media personality, and she sings, and she has a daughter that sings. So when she came to my my shop, and she told me a little about her story about her coming to America, and she's just so grateful for the opportunity to come and for the opportunity to have opportunities. And I said, hmm. She said, can you write a song for me? I said, okay, because I can write a song. So I, I'll try to remember. And so, so and she just simply wanted to say, thank you, America. You've given me an opportunity. You thank you, America. You've given me a chance. And uh, for that, I thank you. So it went something like this. Thank you, America. Thank you, America. Thank you, America. You've been so good to me. Thank you, America. Thank you, America. Thank you, America. You've been so good to me. Thank you, America. Thank you, America. Thank you, America. You've been so good to me. That, that's her thank you. And, and she's, again, so, so grateful, she said, because the opportunity has come. She knows what her life was like and, and the living in, in Cape Verde was for she and her family, but she, she came in, she saw the opportunities. And that, for me, when she told me about that, that m helped me as an American to be more grateful, more appreciative of what we have here. Sometimes the opportunities are right at our feet. And sometimes we don't see them until someone else says, oh, I want that too. It um, reminds me almost a silly thought. Is sometimes if you might go shopping, a lot of us like to go shopping, and you might walk by something, you see only one item on the shelf, and then the next person walking by, and they look at it too. And for some reason, you just want to be the first one to grab this. I want that too. And that's what it is. It's like you, the opportunity is there. So, so um, yeah, yeah God, God blesses you. With, with gratitude. Scripture said God hates an ingrate. He hates an ingrate. So when you can show your gratitude to your family, to your loved ones, your gratitude to your friends, to your friends, we show gratitude to my sister who left for me this mission, this job. That's gratitude. Because that, that God found me worthy to have the commitment, the dedication, the drive, the will, the willingness to sacrifice. I, I put a close, for, my business is closed for today because I'm here. I don't care about the money. It's about extending lives, encouraging lives that keeps her around. So 
um, on that note, I'm sorry. But that, that's about like gratitude, and I'm, I'm so grateful. I'm so f grateful for this opportunity. Somebody would like to have a word? Yeah, you sure? Okay. Okay, well, um, does anyone, uh, let me tell you a little about um, Team Veronica Cancer Resource Center with that, uh, a little about Veronica, so you, those who don't know. Uh, she was my baby sister. She's 48 years old, and my mom had 10 of us, and I was um, 12 years older than she was. And she and I was really close, and put like a metaphor. If, if I was the finger, she was the fingernail. It was just that close, just that close. And from the time she was born, she and I had such a bond because I was really into like encouraging people and helping them. And as she got older, she always reminded me. She said, she called me bra, and I called her sis. <laughs> and she says, uh, from time to time, we'd have our you know, emotional, intimate conversations and stuff, and she would say, she said, bro, she said, I'll always remember you. And I always honor you. She said, because you took time. You taught me my ABCs. You taught me how to read. You taught me how to count. You picked me up from school. She said, you took time. She said, I know I had eight other siblings, but you took time. And she said, you live that. You have that model life. You don't do all those other crazy things that most young people do. She said, you have the pattern. You, you are the model for my children. And that was so honoring. And, um, and they're two young adults are just amazing young people. Bright, ambitious, focused, family, and just really good, good people. And so um, I'm honored by that. And also honored by some of the things she left behind. Um, just like really powerful. Um, Michelle, your mom talked about how God used her. He, he kept the cancer away from her, keep her strong, to keep her build going. And what Veronica left was uh, the fact that she suffered a year and a half with this cancer the whole time. And so young, beautiful, smart, the whole time. She never complained. Never complained. Never, never and like Joyce here, like like um, uh, uh, yeah, uh, 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 sorry, Marilyn, mm -hmm. smiling, smiling the whole time. What are you smiling about? Why not smile? Mm -hmm. Not giving up. Your Manu, she's smiling. Mm -hmm. She's walking with it. Mm -hmm. She's smiling. So that was her spirit. She smiles. She, she's a practical joker. She cracks smiles all the time. You can go to the hospital and visit her, and she tell you the reality. And, and someone spoke about saying her truths. So how you doing? She says, "Well, I trust in God." She says, "God's gonna have the last word. God's got my back. God's got me." That was her. That was her message. So she never complained the whole time, and then um, the whole time she's always thinking about. Other people. So about two weeks before she passed, she talked to her mom. Your mom, she says, I look back over my life, and she says that I only have one regret. And she said, what is that? She said that I didn't take better care of myself. She said, but it was too late. She ignored the signs. She had a little pain, and she thought, well, it's too tired. I just worked too much. And so all along, she's married for 27 years. So throughout that journey, Many, she was so dedicated wife, such a dedicated wife, and so loyal and so focused, supporting her husband. So in, even up to his seventh, between his foot and his knee operation, she would quit her jobs, good jobs, administrative jobs, working at banks and, and companies, big companies, quit her jobs, dedication, sacrifice to take care of him. Then when a young adult, Daquan and Deja, began growing older, as young people, they get involved in a bunch of stuff, cheerleading and football and basketball, and then they got teenagers holding up to work, part-time jobs, quit their jobs, downsize their job, to take them to work, make sure they were safe, make sure they were encouraged and supporting them and all that. 
sacrifice. Even in, even to the point when she, and this is fast forwarding, when she was sick, sometimes chemo three times a week. Come home, I'm zapped out. She'd find enough strength to pick up her cell phone. She jumped on Amazon, ordering toys for other people's kids. Whose birthday's months ahead. Talk about happy birthday. No one had, she wouldn't be here. My mom, we celebrate her 85th birthday in July. And we had a, a really nice banquet for her. Through her trials, Veronica's trials, chemo three times a week sometimes. For this uh, banquet we have, for dinner we have for my mom, about 70 people showed up. Veronica handled the RSVP list. She ordered all the decorations. She hand decorated 70 party favors for it. All this. On her deathbed, her dying bed. Never complained. And then God blessed her to because of COVID, she kept a you know distance of space. God blessed her with the strength to show up to the banquet. Less than a month and a half later, she was gone. And courage is pressing on, determination. Again, the whole time smiling. Sarcastic. And not, you've heard again, sarcastic. So she might say something like, if she visit in the hospital, say, Veronica, how you doing? You know, she, and if she tell you, the doctor might say, ah, Veronica, uh, how are you doing this morning? And did you eat your lunch? And she might say something really sarcastic. She might rather eat your lunch or something like that. And, but she's always she's, she's very sarcastic or whatever. And um, even to the night before she passed, she passed on September 2nd, the night before she passed, I was in a, her apartment with her husband, Daryl, and Daquan. And I was there a little longer. Than I took her some flowers and... I was there long, and I went back. When we go inside the room, and I touch her leg. I say, hey, sis. She opened one eye. She said, are you still here? I said, yeah, I'm still here. And she goes, um, and then she asked Daryl, her husband, to come in. And she said, oh, can you come change me? She said, I had my butt pointing to the wall all day. <laughs> <laughs> and that, was, that, that made me just laugh. And she was just that courageous about it. You know, and she would just always say, God got me. She said, and it was just so peaceful. She was just at peace. She was just, just peaceful and calm. And so um, that was the spirit that she left. And it's not, and the old saying is, it's not how long you live. It's how you live. It's not what you gain. It's what you leave behind. And all those things ring really high and loud for her. Um, again, she had so much promise, so much direction. And even when I started my printing business, custom printing business shop. Before we start, she's all in line. Hey, bro, how you try making this? Do you, I bet this would sell. She was really good at the computer. So she like surfing all over. The, she said, try this one. This is, people really buy this one. So she was like really rooting for me in, uh, um, in that spirit. So what she left, again, that for me very clear, is the spirit of love, and peace, and compassion. And so that I was able to package and then to keep it going, keep it going. And that keeps me dealing with that on a humane level, in a level that makes sense. Yeah, I could be grieving and because of the relationship and, and so forth, but that's not how you deal with it. For me, that's not how I'm dealing with it. So being able to see other people smile, to lift them up, to save them, encourage them through other people, through other resources and means, that's what goes on. And so the, those, um, what's planned for this center, and God is just really moving really fast, really fast. And again, as she just passed in September 2nd. Less than two weeks after she was buried, I created this foundation. In October, a month later, we had a, a cancer, cancer awareness walk. In December, the next month, we had a formal banquet uh, to honor cancer survivors and hear their stories. And now we're having this. And in two days from now, we're going to have the official opening and ribbon cutting ceremony for this office here. We're going to have the mayor. We have the senator who you've met. We have some city councilors here as a community 
as the public officials to officially welcome the office into this space. And once again, welcome all of you to the services that the senator put out. So if there's some needs, or some we may consider like big needs that you might have on a bigger level, you have an issues, maybe on a state level or some legal stuff, you have now a resource. Your organization now has another resource through here. So it's not just about Team Veronica, it's about the organizations we all pull together and, and make it for that. So that's that. So once again, I want to thank everyone who showed up. You want to have a few words now? You comment a few things? <laughs> yeah. And um, just want to thank you for being in this space, welcoming us in this space. And uh, there's a brighter day ahead. There's a lot of things coming forward. Um, I'm told by the management here, and we've only been here not even two months in this space. I'm told by the management very soon we're going to be moving to even a larger space here. That's kind of show the growth. It's growing fast. I have a, a, a practically new massage table. What is it called? A table or a bed, Alan? Depends on how you use it, Jay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You can put food on it or you can sit on it, right? Okay. Yeah, a massage table. I have a fairly new one. And so I, I, it, was, it was gifted to me, and I'm not a massage therapist like, uh, like Alan is, and uh, Alan's fiance, both a massage therapist. I'm not one. And I said, Alan, I have an extra massage table, and would you like it? And Alan said, listen, hold on to it. He says, because Alan said, I belong to a, a group, an organization of fellow massage therapists. And part of that giving back act that they perform, they give free massages, massages to cancer survivors or cancer patients or cancer angels, I'll call them. There's a whole group of uh, men and women that were trained uh, to know how to treat cancer survivors safely. So Tracy Walton, and I took, you know, the uh, regular class and the advanced class, and it's just a lot of good information. And so I have this fairly new massage bed, uh, ta table, oh. sorry, <laughs> massage table. And what I plan to do with that, uh, once we get into a newer space, then we're going to connect with Alan's group, and we're going to schedule. We're going to reach out to you, those who feel a little stressed and just want to kind of have a relaxation, just have some, you know. Uh, a, you know, relax your body. So then we're going to schedule, and that will be absolutely free for you guys to come up. Question. Caregivers? Caregivers. Yeah, we'll extend that. And again, it, it, she may be stressed out. Not because of you. Of course, not because of you. No, no, not because of you. Because, you know, the, 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 the neighbors, you know. But uh, she, um, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and there's, there, again, there's, it, it's, it's just catch that because it's not about us. It's about if, again, we can support her that puts you in a better position to support you, then we're supporting you uh, through that. And that's our mission. That is our mission. So the, the goal is that the mission is to provide those services to support you to where you uh, have to be, to improve the quality of your life. Yeah, that's the mission. So once again, I want to thank you all for, and we'll, we'll, constantly, we'll be doing more and more events. A big event we have coming up is going to be on May 12th. And it's going to be on a Thursday. We're going to have a Cancer Resource Expo. Expo. And at this expo, we're going to invite almost every conceivable entity, agency, department, organization, charity. And we're going to invite them. And we want to uh, have a big space where each of them have a table. So at this event, we're expecting lawyers and movers and bankers, insurance companies, uh, uh, psychologists, therapists, um, you name it, housing, people from housing, insurance, all these are real critical issues when people need to make transition from one level to another around housing. You may have to downsize or upgrade or expand. So then you have, will have had an opportunity to initially make these contacts and not wait or not be subject to that time when people are like stressed out, panic. Well, I, I need a lawyer to explain these papers. I need to move. I don't know who to call. So you would have all been able to uh, establish those relationships. We, we feel that if you do it in advance, then you, you can build on that. So they say, oh, yeah, Michelle, I remember you. We met, you know, 
you know, a while back, we met at the expo. And, and so it can go from there. And then and that's what we want to offer do. So this is, once again, welcome. This today is happy Valentine's Day of Love. Mm -hmm. want to thank and uh, welcome each of you. And uh, again, the, the wishes that you that you find the comfort, the love, and the peace, and the compassion that you so, so, so deserve. Not just on today, but each and every day. Yes, and we thank you, and God bless you. And my great-grandfather used to say to us, and may heaven smile on you. Thank you so much. And I'm Dr. James Bruce. I'm the founder and director of Team Veronica Cancer Resource Center here in Brockton. Thank you. Uh, certificate of Participation in the Team Veronica CRC, Cancer Resource Center, Valentine's Day of uh, Valentine's Day Gift of Love event. It's going to have your name and presented to your name, a cancer survivor angel and the day's date. Okay? And that's going to be presented to you. And we're going to bless Michelle's mom because she is a cancer survivor angel as well. She survived all that taking care of you, <laughs> you and, 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 and your dad and all those good things. And again, we, we are definitely an angel.